Miss France. So, Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered a ceasefire in Ukraine on January the 6th and January the 7th. According to the Kremlin, he's ordered it on the eve of Orthodox Christmas following a request from Russia's spiritual leader, Patriarch Kirill. Patriarch Kirill is a supporter of Putin. He's a supporter of the special military operations slash invasion of Ukraine. But on this occasion, with Christmas, Russian Orthodox Christmas coming up, he has ordered Putin to respect its tradition and in turn Putin has ordered a ceasefire to be held. In a statement, the Kremlin said that it is taking into account the appeal of His Holiness Patriarch Kirill. Wherefore, the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, has instructed the Defence Minister of the Russian Federation, Sergei Shoigu, to introduce from 12 p.m. midday on January the 6th, 2023, which in Greenwich Meridian time will be 9 a.m. in the morning until midnight on January the 7th, 2023, which in Greenwich Meridian time will be 9 p.m. in the evening, 2100. A ceasefire along the entire lines of contact between the sides in Ukraine. In that order, Putin said that proceeding from the fact that a large number of citizens professing orthodoxy live in the areas of hostility, he has called on the Ukrainian side to declare a ceasefire and allow them to attend services on Christmas Eve as well as on Christmas Day. Of course, this has not been taken graciously by the Ukrainian armed forces who have deemed it great hypocrisy and while responding to the cold ceasefire Ukrainian presidential advisor Mikhail Podilak very outspoken as he is has said that Russia instead of calling Christmas Day ceasefires should just leave the occupied territories how about that and then it will have a temporary truce i.e. there will be no ceasefire whilst Russia is on Ukrainian territory according to Mikhail Podilak and he advised Vladimir Putin and Russia to keep their hypocrisy to themselves he tweeted first of all Ukraine does not attack foreign territory and does not kill civilians as the Russian Federation do Ukraine destroys only members of the occupation army on its territory. Secondly, according to Podilak, the Russian Federation must leave the occupied territories. Only then, according to Podilak, will it have a temporary truce. Keep the hypocrisy to yourself, Mr. Putin. Earlier in the day, Vladimir Putin and um, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky, both separately, spoke to Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey on separate phone calls. Erdogan has been somebody who's been trying to mediate some kind of understanding and ceasefire. Like Turkey did in Istanbul back in March, April, when they had in agreement a means of ending this war, only for Boris Johnson to be flown in and torpedo the deal on the proviso that he didn't want or the United States, who told Boris Johnson to go, didn't want Ukraine to sign ceasefire and agreement contracts with Russia because, one, it would stop the flow of arms going to Zelensky and the arms industries in the West, specifically the United States, from making a profit from this war. And two, they actually really believed that in that inchoate moment of the war, Ukraine could defeat Russia. Little did they know that Russia had not come into the war doctrinally. 
they've come in soft with only approximately 150,000 troops under the inv proviso of it being a special military operations rather than a full-on war, which, alas, turned out to be a bit of a disaster as Russia got smacked about in the first few days, weeks of the war. As the world um, segues into 2023, both leaders need to make it clear that solutions to ending this war must be found at the table. Because if it's not, then it will be found on the battlefield. It looks like both leaders, Zelensky and Putin, have no current way, ways, means, reasons, desire to come up with peace talks anytime soon. Wherefore, this war will be, as Joseph Burrell himself said, and as Sergei Lavrov himself said, be decided on the battlefield. Rolling Strongs.